Hello, how's it going? Um, I'm Sarami, and uh, we're gonna do part two of the Cheyenne tunic today. I tried it on, it's gonna fit good, I think. Um, and uh, every time I iron it though, and I lay it down, it gets wrinkled a little bit. So <laughs> I think that's just the nature of the fabric. So this is what we're doing. We sewed part one on Thursday, and we did the placket the collar, the shoulders, and the yoke, and we clean finished all of it. It turned out really great. Kind of pressed it a little bit here. We have our little pockets. There's a thread. I always trim my threads as I see them. It looks really good. It's all clean finished. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about doing the yoke on the bias, just the outer one. I can see it's doing this little, you see this little poofy thing? I don't like that. <laughs> so um, uh, I think that this probably isn't the most ideal fabric to do your yoke on the bias, but I just wanted to follow the directions and see um, what effect it would have. And then that way you're experimenting on mine. So let me, um, I think I might want to brighten this up a little bit. It's a little cockeyed, but I also don't want the camera in my, in my way. So bright this is right here, but it's not that bright right here. So I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. So um, let's see. I think I'm just going to get right to it. I'm going to do French seams because a lot of folks don't have a serger. And I think this fabric it actually warrants doing French seams. I'm only going to need to do them on the cap of the armhole, the cap of the sleeve and the armhole and the side seam. So that's it. That's not too bad. I did notice that that's how she set the pattern up to do that, which is great. However, if you don't do that, you can sew it and overlock it or finish it another way that you like. You can <clears throat> roll the, you know, if you have five eighths of an inch, you can actually roll and hem it inside the seam allowance, kind of like a mock flat feld. Um, but what I was concerned about was that the seam allowance shifts to five eighths of an inch for this. And so uh, that was something you need to really pay attention to is what the seam allowances are. Because <clears throat> if you watch the, my first video, you'll notice that I actually did the incorrect seam allowances at the um, shoulder and yoke, and then I stuck to it. So it has changed a few times. So just pay attention to that. I think that this is loose fitting enough. It's not gonna make a big deal, you know, so. Um, let's see here get our sleeve pieces out. So what are you guys working on today? Anyone out there sewing? It is Saturday, right? All right, here's my sleeve cuffs. These sleeves have a sleeve tab so you can roll your sleeve up and then button it, you know, there. Oh, and did you notice I'm wearing my dress out of the same exact fabric? <laughs> it's not the rayon. Um, and it's obviously not the same color, but I literally got all the way to my cart and almost pressed buy before I noticed it was the exact same print. It just looked different in the picture to me. I don't know why. I'm really attracted to this kind of orangey red too. So, um, so here's the little binding for the sleeve placket. And then this is the tab. So I'm going to sew these first and I'm going to, I'm going to do the sleeve exactly pretty much exactly how she states in the directions, but I'm gonna warn you, I'm gonna do it out of order from how she has it. And um, I'll tell you my way of thinking behind that. It's just my personal preference to do as much as you can on the piece before you attach it to the garment so you don't have to deal with the whole garment in your way. So I'm actually gonna finish each sleeve separately on individually and then attach them to my bodice. And so the way she has you do it, <clears throat> oh, hi guys. I can't even see your chat. Let me see. I can see like people are chatting, but hi, Kirby. Hi, Ida. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat. I haven't talked much today. <laughs> um, uh, she has you do the set the sleeve onto the garment open so that it's the side seam is unsewn when you go to do that. That is easier, but it's not my preferred way. It's totally a subtle, small difference. I do feel like the sleeve feels better on and um, my range of motion is slightly better when it's a continuous circle around the armhole when you set it on, especially with um, French seams because French seams are a little bulkier. But 
honestly, really, we're talking really subtle, picky things that I like to do. So you don't have to do it that way. You can do it the way she has it. But um, you can't really finish the entire sleeve before you set it on if you do her way. And so um, I'm just doing it this way, but you can look at each step and follow along if you're ever going to make this one. I already want another one of these and I want it in like a warm and cozy fabric so that I can wear it right now because this feels pretty springy right now. So, all right, so let's see. I'm going to make these tabs, attach them. Oh, I wanted to see if I had, oh, I do. Yay, yay, yay. I have the marking on there. I remember doing it, but I wasn't sure if the pen was still there, you know. <clears throat> all righty, let's see. My throat is like all of a sudden not happy with me. <laughs> So I am so excited. I got through all my orders this week. I worked 12 hour days every day this week <laughs> and I got all of my orders done from last week. Um, dropped my last batch off at the post office this morning. I'm so happy about that. And after I stream today, make me go home because <laughs> I just want to enjoy my house. Basically, I want to clean my house and um, just get caught up. I have hardly seen my puppy. And he sees me and he's like, oh, you, do I bark at you? Do I know you anymore? So, you know, um, let's see. I don't know what the seam allowance is for this tab. And now I doubt it. <clears throat> I would use a quarter myself. Dang, Kirby, what? <laughs> oh, I'm working so much. I know. Yeah, it was nuts. I was really shocked by the orders I got. I'm really pleased, but um, wasn't prepared at all for that kind of thing. Like my, my shelves are usually pretty spot on. I have everything's fully stocked, but um, you know, there's a few things I have to finish sewing and I didn't realize all every single one of those things <laughs> would sell. So uh, that was a little nuts. All right, let's see. I'm gonna look at the, um, that's the other sleeve placket. Here we go. Quarter inch. Perfect. That's what exactly what I wanted to see. So we're just going to do quarter inch seam allowance. I already switched my needle to a 14. Um, 14 is still kind of a big needle if you guys are using a home machine. Um, you could use a 12 on this. But look at this fabric. Look at how much it wants to buckle. Can you see that? Like if I smooth this out, look at <laughs> I'm just going to trim all that excess off. Partly the feed difference between my feed dogs and my presser foot, but um, mostly it's just this round. One has been ironed with interfacing, one has not. Sorry, I keep lifting and raising my presser foot. I know it's noisy. All right, let's see how I did. Okay, good. So yeah, I wanted to make sure I still stayed in that seam allowance there of this one. Mainly because I really want to make sure I get a symmetrical uh, sleeve tab. So I'm going to trim off my little points there. And it's actually not symmetrical. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. But this, I turned here and I turned there. So I need to drop this one down to there. Better to be able to see it on this side. That's a little more symmetrical. Okay. I'm gonna turn that with my um, my loop turner. So this time I'm gonna sew it from this side so I can see. It's interesting, the, seam, the grain line on these pattern pieces goes this way. I don't know why that is, you know? So if you have a stripe Bear that in mind if you cut something like this out. Because it's gonna, it's going to go on your sleeve. It's gonna hang straight down. Um, and, and I like the idea of the stripe, uh, if it was a stripe, the stripe going this way against your shirt going this way. That's pretty cool. But it's something to bear in mind if you don't want that effect or you end up doing it so that it's like, looks weird because it's like faces or something, you know? I always equate everything being sewn with faces. <laughs> All right, this time I'm gonna look at, where's my little tiny ruler? It's like disappeared, here we go. I'm gonna look at this and I'm just gonna mark right there. That's where I wanna pivot. 
That way I don't have to do what I just did on the other one. Alrighty. I am kind of cutting a lot off right there. I just really want the best um, point I can get. Where's my other one of these? I have two of these. Uh-oh. These things are easy to lose. Um, I am a little worried about doing this on the um, rayon because the rayon tends to fray. I'm going to try and hook this on the pellon side, not the other one. My, seam, my uh, stitch length is a little small for this hook. Alrighty. Once I get it going, it'll go pretty quick. And then I always unhook it because, I, look, I'm already damaging that edge. See that? So sometimes this is not the most ideal tool. I can poke it back in with my awl. I'm not worried about it. Plus I get to top stitch it, um, which solves everything, right? <laughs> All right. I'm going to poke that back in there. Let's poke this out first. Okay, get in there. Now I can work on my little point. And then I'll iron it as well. And then we'll top stitch it. All right. One more. So are you guys working on anything today? Am I the only one sewing? What are you guys doing? Ooh. There we go. I, what I'm trying to do when I poke that through really carefully and I get a little nervous is I want just the hook to go through, not the clasp, the part that goes up and down because if the clasp goes through, I have to pull it back out and get the clasp on the other side because what you're trying to do is pinch that edge between the two. I wanna get my point out there, out of here sooner this time. Alrighty. Hopefully I'm showing my hands. It's a different type of sewing. I've been sewing so much, you guys. I've been watching a TV series I started a long time ago and then stopped called The Americans. And um, gosh, why is everything filmed so dark that I can't see what's happening? <laughs> like I'm not even looking at it most of the time. But when I look, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Oh, cool, Kirby. On that Moneta train still. Nice. Okay, let's get my point a little bit nicer. My bangs are driving me nuts. They're doing something really weird today. My hair is totally wild today. Oh, thanks, Kirby. I, I'm trying not to um, give it ex any more extra heat. I feel like it's turning a color at the bottom, like it's getting blonde at the bottom. It's really weird. <clears throat> and I don't know if that's what it is. I know nothing about hair. <laughs> I know nothing about color and stuff like that. I also want my uh, top stitching to be pretty symmetrical from side to side. Let me see, make sure my point didn't drop into the feed dog channel there. There we go. So ideally, you would put your um, buttonhole on this right now before you attach it, <clears throat> just because it would be a little easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, cool. That's great, Kirby. 
Yeah, I bet lining the Modetta for the neckline is awesome. They don't have to worry about cover stitching or hemming, huh? It's a good idea. Plus, it'll be warmer. It can be kind of a lightweight dress. Wearing a dress today, I was like, oh, it's a little chilly. But I get, I stay pretty warm when I'm streaming. So I was like, okay, I'm wearing leggings under my dress. And I have to admit, that is not my favorite look. And it's not my most comfortable way to wear a dress. I always feel like it's going to ride up, you know? It looks really cute on other people. But for me, I just, I don't know why. It just bugs me when I do it. But I've hardly worn this dress. I don't think I've ever worn it on stream. It's the, um... Francis dress by Green Bee Patterns. I really love sewing it. It's a long dress, no set in waist seam. So it goes really quick. It's got the ties, the only things. I'll show you. See, it's buttons all the way down. I don't think I have pockets. I have one hand pocket here. That's it. Okay, so these are ready and now I'm gonna attach them to my um, sleeve on the wrong side. So I'm going to pull out this. I'm gonna push that in like that. I'm gonna pull this one out and push it all the way through and then I'm gonna pull them apart like that. And now I'm gonna mark them on this side. Because I cut my sleeves with the right side of the fabric out, the marking ended up being on the incorrect side. There we go. That's how I solve that. Just do that kind of pull apart method. Thanks, Ida. Yeah, I hardly wore it when I, after I made it because I didn't like ironing it. <laughs> but honestly, the, it, the fabric doesn't wrinkle too much. It was just like the placket and the collar and that was about it. So when I went to iron today, I was like, this is easy to iron. Why haven't I worn this more? And I like her patterns. Like I'm definitely gonna sew the Amelia dress for you guys because I've sewn like four of those. It's one of my favorite dresses to wear and sew. Okay, so um, you just turn this under a little bit, quarter, half, three, I can't remember what she said. And then um, I'm going, I can see my pinhole right there. I'm going to try and make this perfectly perpendicular to the sleeve hem. that. Stop that. <laughs> it's like um, restless foot pedal syndrome. Okay. Alrighty. And now I'm going to Sew this down, and I'm gonna do her little uh, X in the box stitching. I'm going to go past where I folded it under there. It's a little dark. Why does it look so bright and then not, not dark bright? Um, so that I encase it in there so it's completely clean finished. I'm back to that how to draw a uh, house with an X in it without retracing your lines. I don't think anyone's going to notice me retracing that one little leg, though. Because you guys are never going to tell, right? There we go. And so you see you're stitching on the other side. So that's why you want it to be as clean and minimal as possible. And we're going to put a button right there. And then when there's a buttonhole here, you'll be able to cinch up your sleeve like that. Pretty classy. <clears throat> the funny thing is I have never made a sleeve with one of those. It's so funny because I actually really like three quarter length sleeves and rolling up my sleeves. Um, and um, I think I would have done it by now. So I'm being a little bit, I don't know if you're noticing, but I'm being a little bit careful. Rayon tends to get skewed, you know, really easily. Like you can kind of make rayon do what you want to do. It's It fights you in some respects, but in other respects, you can actually tell it what you want. This one got a little wider. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so I think I've already done this side. Oh, well, I'm going to have to do two sides again.
You don't have to do the X. Get rid of my start stop stitch. It's a little messy right there where I started and stopped, but not bad. Pretty invisible otherwise. But you know, this is pretty heavy compared to the lightweightness of this fabric. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it, it has a placket, Ida. And you, if you do the other view, you can do that shirt sleeve placket that looks a little bit like this right here. But um, this is just, yeah, the little fold up thing like that. That's all it is. It's a three quarter sleeve. So now I am going to do this. And it's on this view, she kind of catches a break and just makes it the little, um, just a regular little placket. Interestingly, this was not cut on the bias and I've never put one of these on that wasn't cut on the bias. So I'm just gonna try it out and see. You never know, right? And I do this at three or at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm actually gonna do it from the inside to the outside. So right side to the wrong side, quarter inch. And the trick with this is, she has a good illustration of this in there, is you're sewing this in a straight line. So <clears throat> when you get to this point here, it's your, it's at the, the shallow, the seam allowance is gonna be the shallowest right there. And then it goes right back out to the quarter inch to here. So this is a little longer it looks like. So you wanna maintain quarter inch on this piece and you're gonna to go to almost zero on this piece here. Cause what you're, otherwise you're gonna to have to slit it a little further. And, and so you might as well just get close to it rather than slit it even higher up. A little easier if I would have done this on the um, sleeve side. You don't wanna get any wrinkles under there. So if I had cut this piece of uh, binding um, on the bias, it would have been um, a, even longer. So you see that? So there's my binding piece and there's the sleeve piece. No tucks, that is just the, um, that it's doing something it really doesn't wanna do. It's like, no, I don't wanna be that way. I'm, I was already the other way. This is a really wide piece of binding. So I'm gonna enclose that now you see why I started from the inside to the outside? Because now I can cover up anything I don't want to show. Because this is the side that shows. So I'm gonna fold it all the way and then I'm gonna use my awl. Like that. This is really wide binding. <laughs> kind of funny. I actually am having trouble with the seam allowance. It's so wide. There you go. So now you have your placket. <laughs> Rayon, man. Jeez. Okay. Actually goes like this. See that? That, that. Hi, Lisa. How's it going? Why is this so... There we go. There you go. So then um, she does this little trick that I like to do too. She goes in here and she just sews across the end here. You just want to get the fold in the right spot. Just like a little like triangle off of it. Like that. And then it will uh, want to stay kind of poked to the inside of the shirt more. Does that make sense? I feel like this sleeve, maybe this sleeve does, I don't think this sleeve actually has um, tucks in it. It does on the long sleeve version, but not this version. I'm gonna fold this edge back, cause that's how it's gonna end up be, being, and just stitch it down now. Just set myself up for later. Here we go. There we go. And then it has a little cuff right here. And then 
you're kind of done. Like there's, it's a pretty simple, um, it's a pretty simple sleeve. So let's see, I'm gonna do my other placket now before I lose this little pattern piece here. And then we'll put, do our underarm seam of the sleeve and then um, uh, the cuff and then the put on the sleeve. And you know how much I love putting on sleeves. I'm joking, I've been joking in like Instagram and then on my first comment on here um, that, you know, it's like in knitting, I don't know if any of you are knitters and if you've knit a sweater, people are like, okay, I'm on sleeve island now. Meaning like, it's like you've knit the whole sweater and you still have to knit the sleeves. And the sleeves surprisingly take so much longer than you think it's gonna take. And so people call it sleeve island, like you're just kind of deserted there. And um, I'm really glad that that's not a thing in sewing. Like sleeves you can just get through in an hour, you know? So hopefully you can see this a little better this time. See that? So this seam allowance stays the quarter inch. Oh shoot, did I do that from the, I did that from the right side to the, oops, oh well. I'll just have to be accurate, darn it. Eek. This man, this machine, when the presser foot comes down, it comes down. Yes, Lisa, yeah, they take ages, exactly. Sometimes people knit the sleeves first. I learned that, because um, I mostly just knit sweaters, I really like sweaters. Um, I learned what worked for me was I would um, knit my whole sweater and then pick up around the armhole and knit down. That was like, I liked that because it got faster and faster and faster because <laughs> you were getting smaller and smaller and smaller circumference. So I probably should have checked how I did there, how I do. Not bad, it looks fine. Right, okay, I'm gonna fold this one back, top stitch it down. And do my little trick of securing it on the inside. My machine always leaves this long tail. So annoying. I'm so picky about that. Okay, so now I'm going to do my uh, underarm seam and I'm doing French seams. So I'm gonna first do them at a quarter inch. Now that I know that's a 5 eighths inch seam allowance. Quarter inch and then, um, and wrong sides together. Why is that not matching? It's the underarm seam. That's weird. Maybe my cutting. Annoying. Shouldn't have to ease in the arm, the underarm. They should be at the exact same angle. Exactly. Yeah, right, Lisa? Exactly. I was just I just noticed Kirby you had written more about the ear moneta. Oh yeah, that's smart. And then it's not so see-through. Yeah, exactly. I do feel like depending on what knit you pick for that moneta, it shows more like bumps too, you know? Like like the bump under your bra or whatever. And I don't like that. And um when you line it, that it gives it more like thickness more modesty in a way, smoothing. I'm gonna trim, I'm trimming these little tiny rayon threads. I feel like these are what foil your fringe seam. The, that's what pokes out, right? These are the, these scissors, I'm gonna give myself some new scissors. I have so many little pairs of scissors around here. I even have brand new ones, but I just don't like them. I like a really pointy tip. Okay, so I'm going to iron that before I sew it. I'll do this underarm now. Wrong sides together. 
you can start from the top of the underarm and go down or the cuff. I, it, I am just trying to be consistent is all. Look at that. This one is longer too. Weird. I might check that pattern. This is likely because of cutting rayon. Rayon is so, you know, it moves a lot on the table. It's so annoying, right? It kind of grows. Like you can make it do whatever you want. Kind of like knit. I wonder why that is. I wonder if it's partly the weave and the content and just the combination of the two. Like, well, I love wearing rayon. And I washed, I pre-washed this. Like I washed it like regular, just put it in the washing machine on warm and then um, throw it in the dryer. Probably I put it on low for 20 minutes and that's about it. I do a lot of my stuff on low for 20 minutes because um, it dries really fast and um, you know, it's fabrics like this. I don't do my denim that way. I do that pretty high actually. The best way to treat your clothes is honestly line dry. <laughs> But a lot of us don't do that here in the States. All right, I'm going um, to iron this. Swivel you over. You look through my thread and my microphone there. So I'm going to first iron this so that I'm going to press this seam one direction, the seam allowance, and then I'm going to put it on the edge and, fold, and sew it again. I'm gonna use my, um, what do you call it? It's not a sleeve board, it's kinda like a sleeve ham. <laughs> Makes it a little easier. Can you see that? So then I press the seam that way, you can kinda see it through. And then this way I'm not like adding to the wrinkles of the other side. And then I'm going to fold the seam along the edge there and iron that. It gives it a really nice crisp edge to sew with. Who needs pins then, right? I have like so it's like so the sleeve thing is so sticky. Yeah, maybe is that what it's called? Is it called a a, a tailor's ham? <laughs> I don't really know. I mean, I know there's a, a the ham, and it's like bigger, um, and it's more for like tops of shirts and things, you know, inside. But <coughs> this was a I be, when I switched to this this felt pad as my ironing board, I needed something to lift things up. <coughs> I've got such a tickle. I hate it. All right, let's see here. I'm, I really want to do my French seams as fast as possible so that these little fibers don't start poking out, right? I'm kind of like smoothing the fabric. Remember, I sort of eased it together. There's a little bit of torquing on there, too. <coughs> Looks pretty good, though. 
<coughs> Excuse me, you guys. <laughs> yeah, right, Lisa? I, I know, it's more of a, it's like a sleeve board without the board. You know, like, I've the sleeve boards are like little tiny mini ironing boards that are like parallel boards to each other. Um, it's kind of like that. A sleeve ham. So I think a good idea would have been to compare my pattern to the um, cut pieces <clears throat> to see if one of my underarms could have just been trimmed so I wasn't easing it in there like that, you know. Looks pretty good though. All right, let's do our cuffs. So the um, interfacing, um, took me a bit to figure this out. <laughs> a clapper? I've never heard that term before. I don't know what that is, but I, I like sleeve board to me is like, it looks like a little ironing board above a little ironing board and then you set it down and you put your sleeve on the top one and iron it, you know? That's what it kind of looks like. All right, so I need to iron this long edge here. I don't have to, but I'm going to. It'll set me up to succeed without pins so much. And my iron is hot, so why not? I think I'm going to do this the way she has you do it, where she sews the ends first. I don't really like doing it this way, but I'm going to do it. Cutting it really close right there. Where's my other one? There we go. A clapper. I'm gonna Google that later. I've never heard of that. Is it a newish thing or an old fashioned thing? Why is this so wide? I don't like that. I feel like there's a lot more um, sewing gizmos nowadays than there ever have been, right? Like I'll be at the fabric store and I'm like, what's this for? <laughs> you know, and I get kind of lost on that wall of all the things you can use. And, um, you know, I want to try them out and stuff. But um, honestly, I feel like you shouldn't have to buy a ton of things unless you're doing something really um, specific, you know. There are some things that are just easier and better and less frustrating if you have a gizmo, you know? These are not looking as good as I, I would like them to look. I am going to admit that right now. But the rayon is forgiving and punishing all at the same time. <laughs> so we're going to beat it into submission and tell it what we want you to do. All right, so um, I'm going to, the okay, so uh, full confession. Hi, Leah, how's it going? <laughs> I like that you have a, a little picture about your thing, too. You know, I just always have the, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, Lisa. Yeah, see, I need to do that. Um, so full confession, I ironed this edge with the interfacing. That's the outer cuff, the, the one with the interfacing. Uh, because I'm going to do my trick where I sew from the inside of the sleeve to the outside. Uh, most likely the instructions have you do it the other way around. You can do whatever you want. I just like to end on the side that shows so I can see what it's looking like while I'm going. And then I set myself up for better, you know, success that way. So I'm just going to walk 
the sleeve or on this cuff. I'm gonna see, is it gonna, gonna fight me to fit or not? It's kind of lightly holding it. If it's not gonna fight me too much, I'm not gonna pin it. If it does look like one side is a little bit too big, like that, look at that. That's quite a bit, but the cuff may hang out. So let's, let's check it out. The cuff may hang over the edge of the um, sleeve. Let's see here. So the cuff is kind of the last step. So see that you do the um, you do the sleeve tab and then you do the armhole, the underarm. Then she has you hem it and then you go back and do the um, placket and cuff. Oh, so she, what is this angle? Why is there an angle there? It's weird. That one lines up and that one lines up too. Hmm. So I might trim my cuff. Let's see. Maybe it's because I, it's not because I folded back. You have to have that folded back. Otherwise it looks really weird. Oh, cool. So you're gonna do the um, Hawthorne dress as a top. I think that's a great idea. That's such a nice classic uh, silhouette. I'm so happy that things with darts and princess seams are coming back. Like that's, that kind of dates me, I know. But at the same time, I think like that silhouette works really well for my body type. And um, it's really nice that there's going to be some more options, you know. Because like a few years ago, if I was wearing things like that, it would look it's like tough to not to make it look old fashioned, you know? And my sense of style is a little bit more classic, but I know I have some unique pieces in my wardrobe too. A little bit of the funky because I hand make things and I have my handmade sweaters and stuff. Okay, look at how much that is different right there. Eek. I'm gonna cut that stuff off, you guys. You've seen it here first. I'm not gonna fight that. I don't think, you know, like usually a sleeve has pleats in it. So, so if it, um, yeah, it has a pe peplum, exactly. Yeah, see I can't, I really can't wear peplums, but I love them so much. I think they're really cute. Um, if, uh, see the sleeve usually would have also pleats in it, but it doesn't need to because it's a three quarter. And um, so it's not that, and that would actually give me more in the cuff. Look at that. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't just hurt myself there. Gone. It's just a cuff. <laughs> Still goes around just in case you're worried. See? Still goes around me. <laughs> That's awesome, Leia. That's awesome, Ida. Yeah, exactly. I know. I love that style. In fact, my basic block that's been sitting there waiting for me to sew up, that's how that is. It's just darts, set in sleeve, basic collar, and then I use that for everything. And um, I want to bring back princess scenes. I love princess scenes. I think they're really flattering on curvy people and people without curves. It kind of just accentuate if you like that kind of silhouette. Like not everybody likes that silhouette. Like honestly, if I would have had my choice, I would have looked more like a boy. Like I really love the androgynous look and I was born with curves. So I've just gone with it rather than fight it and be frustrated by it. And the that kind of silhouette like works the best on my body. So I'm just gonna I'm, I should just cut the same exact amount off, but I'm superstitious and I'm live. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. <laughs> yeah, it's like a fat inch that I'm taking off. Now I'm not being really precise because this fabric is so wishy-washy that I really can like, I'll be able to kind of um, do what I want with it when I'm sewing it. If I were using like a t really tightly woven poplin or something less forgiving, I would probably be way more accurate about what I'm doing right now. Oh yeah, exactly, Ida. That sounds nice. Ida, you've been sewing a lot. I noticed on your Instagram. 
You guys should share your Instagrams with each other so you can see what each other makes. It's kind of fun. I love seeing what you guys do. All right, so I'm doing it from the inside. I'm not gonna pin it now because I just did something crazy anyway. And starting from the inside of the sleeve, I'm gonna start from the edge of my bias. I'm thinking about this right now because I know there's a way that makes it a little bit easier to enclose this edge. I can't quite remember it. I used to be really proficient at sleeves and cuffs for a while there. I was doing so many, but that was a very long time ago. <laughs> All right, I always press my underarm seam uh, towards the back of the sleeve. So when I get closer, I'm gonna really start paying attention to how close I am like right now. Perfect. Look at that. Yay. <laughs> so glad we're not easing in an inch of cuff in there. I'm going to check the pattern to see if that was just me. That seems like quite a bit. Maybe um, it's very likely maybe I cut the wrong size cuff. All right. So now my cuff goes all that stuff goes inside. Where's all that thread coming? Oh, there we go, okay. So now when I uh, do this, interestingly enough, I'm going to pin it near the fold of the cuff rather than at the seam. I'll do some of those too. But the reason I do that is um, because I don't want it to torque. I don't like torquing, you guys know that. So, um, So I kind of straighten out the cuff like this. And then um, I like to pin it out here like this. That way I still have a little bit of movement here, but I'm not gonna get that torquing that I really can't stand. And um, I'm also checking my fold because I think I need to fold it a little bit more like this. I want the width to be consistent. I think when um, there's a pattern for interfacing on a cuff, there's not a, um, in this pattern, she has you cut two fabric and then one in interfacing, then you're supposed to cut that down the middle. But I feel like the interfacing should be a little bit smaller than the half of the cuff that you're gonna apply it to so that you don't have this issue of any cutting inaccuracy, inaccuracies creeping up on you um, or sewing inaccuracies creeping up on you. And you're not doing what I'm doing right now where I'm folding a little bit of the interfacing under now it's gonna to be top stitch down, so it's not a problem, but it does make it a little bit trickier to do this step. And um, when, if you were to um, make that interfacing piece, just like maybe like an eighth of an inch smaller, going this way, then you have some leeway at that fold line. You know what I mean? Oh, that's awesome, Ida. I, you know, I, I think like, I think we have a puppy and it's a pug and apparently like, Hug sweaters are a thing. <laughs> so um, I'm wondering if they if he needs one or if it's just a thing because I would love to sew him something <laughs> or knit him something. I've wanted this like I've wanted to knit a dog sweater since I started knitting and I've never had a dog that needed a sweater. They would be like, what are you talking about, lady? So So can you see that? Like I'm kind of wrapping this little edge here. My interfacing's kind of fighting it. But I'm gonna top stitch it down, it's gonna be all fine. 
All right, so I'm going to um, turn my sleeve inside out. I'm gonna start like this. Uh, I like to sew so inside the um, sleeve because then it makes it easier. It stays flatter. I don't have the danger of catching this side of the sleeve under my needle while I'm doing that. So um, this also illustrates like, look at that, like it's kind of far away from the edge there. So let's move that down like that. Let's see how that looks. I'm gonna pin a couple. I'm gonna move some of my pins from the fold down there now. That way I know I'm not getting any of that torquing. This print looks so different than the one I'm wearing in a way, doesn't it? <laughs> Funny that I'm wearing the exact same one. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna do my start and stop. Um, maybe near, I'm gonna do it at the underarm seam because I know that's gonna be underneath. I'm gonna start right there. I'm not gonna back tack quite yet. There it is, cherry pie. So I use a pin cushion, not a magnetic one, because um, one of my pet peeves is when my pins get magnetized, because then they'll start grabbing my scissors and things like that. And um, I don't know if you've ever had that happen where you pick up your scissors and there's a, a pin stuck behind there, and then you go to cut and you cut the pin and you ruin your scissors. So it's why I never use magnetics to corral anything like that. When um, I switched my needle out back to the 18 I needed for my sewing this week, I hadn't used this needle very much on Thursday. I actually did put it on, I have magnets up here. See right here, I have the stack of magnets right here. Um, they're for sewing pattern holders. I just leave them there and I did stick it there and I thought, oh watch, this is gonna magnetize some of my pins, but you know, they're not, it's not really coming in too much contact. Aw. Yeah, that's true. I could make a um, matching. <laughs> if I had some extra of that plaid from my jammy pants back there, I would totally make him something out of that. I think they still have that fabric though, but ooh, I cut it close on those pants. Oh my goodness. Glad I didn't sew those on stream because um, I think I couldn't even match the plaid in one spot and it was really bugging me. I'm liking this interfacing a little bit better. Someone gave me a tip um, via a friend because she heard me complaining about interfacing on stream and so she texted my friend to tell me. <laughs> Yeah, see, Ida, we want to see your dog. I feel like it's you that did sew your dog a sweater, right, on Instagram, and I saw it. Yeah, you guys should share your Instagram if you want. You don't have to. Um, and I need to look up what she said. Maybe I'll look at my phone right now and look at it. Um, I screenshot it so it would be in the in the conversation of the text. Ooh, that went so good. Don't you love it when that happens? Okay, so see... I didn't catch my cuff there and there. Doesn't matter, we started there, right? And it looks really nice on this side, so. Voila. So then uh, this will get a button and buttonhole. Can fold it up. Where's the, oh, it's on the side. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait, how's that attached? Where is it? I can't even see it. Oh, the, oh, there it is. Okay, when the button's there, that'll be good. Okay, so maybe you do it twice to get that look. Like that. <laughs> like that. 
Alrighty. Oh, actually, I do want this right side out. So is everyone getting ready for their Mountain View pull-on pants? Got your pattern, your fabrics ordered, your pre-washing, right? I think my fabric's pre-washed. I can't remember. <clears throat> I have to check. Next week, I am making the men's Jutland pants. Oh, I think it's by Thread Theory Designs. Is that it? Thread Theory. Hope I'm not misquoting there. Um, and we're going to do some menswear because that's what they're featuring on the Love to Sew podcast. And I have an advertisement coming out on there. And so um, I think it would be fun to do some menswear. I would like to do just more menswear in general. I don't know if you guys want that, but um, I find it <clears throat> interesting. And I don't need more clothes. I could use some t-shirts. I do have a, te a teenager who um, steals my clothes. I guess I should feel fortunate she thinks my stuff's cute enough to do that, but I'm running out of shirts, guys. She won't take this one. But she's taken like a few of my long, I didn't have very many t-shirts to begin with. You know, like layering pieces, I need some layering pieces. So I uh, maybe once we're set up, we can have more serger videos and things like that. And um, we can sew some t-shirts and stuff. I'm all paranoid again. I know it's gonna work. I don't know why I'm getting paranoid. Just so, just so lady. My seam, my uh, seam, pushing it towards the back. God, rayon, man. Rayon. I think that men's pair of Jutland pants has a welt pocket, though. What did I sign up for? Doing a live welt pocket? You know I'm going to practice next week before I see you guys again. <laughs> so most of the dent stretched denim out there, Lisa, is okay. Um, you can always ask the fabric vendor to check it for you. But we measured a lot, and then we looked at a few. Um, did you see that? That was a piece of interfacing sitting there. It was fused to the outside of my cuff. <laughs> Um, just so you know that when she specified the 20% or whatever it is, um, I feel like it made all of us a little bit nervous. Like, wait, is this easy to find? Can we find denim that has that much stretch, you know? So, okay. Because my fold is doing that funny thing where I have to like put a little bit of the interface side towards the inside, I'm going to pin a little bit more on the seam line here. So that I can see what that amount is that I need to fold up there. And then I'm going to adjust to make sure I don't get any torquing. I just poked my finger with my pin so I don't want to bleed on my shirt. It's a thing. <laughs> All right, let's uh, pull this inside out like this. Yeah, you could totally sew your gingers though instead. That's fine with me. But it's the same, um, the same denim I use for my ginger jeans works for this. So yeah, it's 20, yeah. Yeah, awesome, Ida. Yeah, I feel like, um, and I tried that. Remember I sewed that little trial waistband? I pulled it on and it was fine. I mean, I know when it's attached to pants, it adds a whole layer of like, you know, shimmying to get your pants on. I, I'll tell you guys, I, I own a few pairs of pull-on jeans that I've bought and they are a little bit, you know, like an oomph to get on. But once you get them on, they don't move, you know, it's great. 
they have you buy them in kind of a smaller size than you are, which is a little nerve wracking. All right, start with our underarm seam. I just don't like my back tacks to be here or here, right? Because it just creates this bulk and then if you have a problem sewing this and you need to back up, it's nice if you've started here without a back stitch so that you can go back to that. Because um, you might realize you have an issue with your cuff before you've finished. But if you've backstitched right here, that is a, it's a, a high visible area, highly visible area. So you don't really want to take the chance that you might rip it or something um, or like wear out the fabric there. This was a little faster just pinning it like that. I feel like I'm a little off my seam. get rid of some of these pins because when I come back around they're just going to poke me and I that bugs me <laughs> I mean I know you know it bugs me but those are these are quilting pins so they're a little longer than they need to be I am aware of that I'm gonna get rid of this little thread poking out because all it's gonna do is just poke out keep poking out even once I sew it and it gets really hard to get in there to get rid of it Oh my gosh. And I think the cuff looks just more uh, professional and clean when you, why is that doing that? Dang, my all like pulled it out. When you don't do your back tacks at those spots. I'll bet if you look at your machine bot things, um, machine bot, uh, store bot things. Um, they, they probably don't have a back tack there either. Just weird little things that you kind of learn over the years. You start not liking. It's just nice to be able to just continuously sew here too. There's a lot to focus on right here. we go. <laughs> Scissors won't cut. Yeah, see I did get a little bit further up there. It's still secure, but you know, not my best sewing right there. Looks good on the outside, but when I roll it, I'll have to, I'll, I, you know, it might bug me a little bit. There we go. Sleeves are ready to put on. Did I do my under, oh, I didn't do my side seam yet on here, so I'm going to do my side seam. Wrong sides together. I ironed this right before we streamed, too. <laughs> but no, I'm going to wrinkle again. I think because it was still warm. I was thinking a really great mod for this uh, tunic would be to put... Um, pin tucks or pleats, little tiny pleats. Hi, Malin, how's it going? Um, down the like bodice right here. And then I saw someone did it and it looked really good. And they, they were someone um, that she reposted. So if you want to do that, check it out. And um, cause I think that person did a whole like blog tutorial on how to do it, so. I think this is a really great pattern. I feel like it's really versatile. It's one of those ones that I would probably make a few different ways, you know, because um, I like blouses that are pullover rather than button down all the time. So, um, I don't know. It's a little easy to iron. You don't have to put in as many buttons and buttonholes. And, um, I just feel like it's less bulk at your waist, which I'm all about because my I have a belly and I don't really want to accentuate it. Like I'm realizing that archer button up that I was wearing the other day, it's too big around my waist down there and I think it's too long. I'm thinking I might shorten it a couple inches. I was kind of playing around with it in the mirror and I was like, you know, I could probably shorten this and it would be a little more flattering. It just looks so like 
big and bulky. And that print is so cute. It kind of takes away from the delicate nature of those flowers, you know? What are you doing here? What are you up to today, Malin? Are you sewing as well? All right. I love coming here with you guys. This is like the easiest part of my week. <laughs> like all I get to do is sew something for me you know and like for years you know um people would ask me oh do you make all your clothes and I'd say no I don't you know I don't really have the time and so I would only sew every year on my birthday and my friends all knew this they like knew and even some of my customers knew this was my tradition and I did it even on years where I had no time to do that I told myself you are not letting this go and it always worked out like everything always worked out even if I was really busy always managed to get everything done without so much stress or just I realized it wasn't as important as I thought it was that I needed to do those things you know how that goes and um but one day a year to sew a few things just really just wasn't enough so it's really nice that I have this like forced time that's not forced at all you know it's like I didn't set this up to sew for myself. I set this up to be able to have more social interaction with other sewers. Um, and I, cause I love streams so much. And honestly, I'm, I'm a pretty chatty person with people, but I'm pretty introverted too. Like I don't really go out much. I don't go do things. Um, and I don't know why I find streams a little bit easier to do that with. And maybe it's because it's a shared topic that we're all interested in. So it's really awesome to like come here and be with you guys, you know, and just do what we like to do. Oh, you're knitting mittens. Aw. That is something I absolutely do not need where I live now. <laughs> all right, I'm going to iron, um, <clears throat> I'm going to iron these side seams. It's starting to feel like a blouse now. It looks big. I guess it is a tunic though. No, my fingers don't get cold here. <laughs> yeah, you do, Malin. Oh, yes. I um, used to live somewhere where sweaters were pretty much appropriate any day of the year. <laughs> I mean, it just because it was like an even 55 to 65 there and wet. Um, and, you know, when it was 70, we were all like, thought. <laughs> and then I moved um, somewhere where it gets 120 in the summer sometimes. And <clears throat> like even now. It's pretty chilly out there, but this is like the high in the summer from where I used to live. So. Ooh, 
we are so close to being done. All I have to do is put the sleeves on and hem it. Yay! It's torquing, I can see it torquing. No torquing, I'm trying to keep it like nice and flat. The reason I care about it in the side seam, like partly is because when you put a seam on something like this, this is um, pretty loosey goosey fabric, right? It's movable, there's a tiny bit of bias because there's a little bit of curve in the waist there. Um, and then what? when you sew it, it binds it, right? It kind of binds up that seam and we all know that feeling, right? Where this, the side seam or a seam it just feels like it's taut and the rest of the shirt kind of is looser around that. And so I don't want that. Like I'm trying to minimize it and um, I'll be honest, like I feel like my machine is probably not the most ideal for really delicate sewing. It can be, it's not set up for it. It's currently set up to do something a little heavier. So I am I had them not set it up quite for as heavy sewing as I'm used to doing because I knew I was transitioning to this, but I still needed to be able to do that heavy duty sewing. And so I've been kind of like backing it off with um, putting in a lower needle size. And that's about as, about, about as much as I can do before I have it adjusted really to a little bit of lighter weight. <clears throat> and I, I don't like that kind of binding up to show on the outside, right? Because then you have to iron it more often and it just shows, you know, so. Um, it's a, supposedly a tunic length, so I think high hip, Malin. I could put it on for you guys if you want. It'd be pretty easy to throw on over my dress right now. But um, I'll hold it up to me. So here's my high hip, so it's a little lower. It's pretty long. It's pretty long, honestly. When I'm in, it'll be a little bit shorter. Um, I probably will shorten it a little bit. Tunics look a little bit like maternity wear on me. <laughs> so I have to be careful. <laughs> There's a like tricky balance, you know? <laughs> All right, so um, let's put our sleeves on. And even though I always know right off the bat which is my front and which is my back of my sleeve, I always triple check, especially when it has uh, this kind of treatment. But usually your, your cuff is going away from your front like this. So this is my underarm right here. The shorter bit is on the back of my arm. So here's my cap. It goes like that. So this is my left sleeve. And there's usually notches, of course, um, on your sleeve. I'm not sure I did it. Yeah, I did do this. So this is my left sleeve. That's my front notch right there. I just like to make sure, you know, especially when you're doing French seams. So this is my uh, left armhole. And I'm going to push my, I'm going to stagger my seams to kind of, no, uh, no, I'm not going to stagger my seams. I don't really want that. I'm going to make sure though that my cuff seam, my seam in my underarm of my sleeve is going towards the back. Yeah, it is. Okay. Because uh, otherwise I could have staggered it, but I don't really want to. Oh, are you making the Cheyenne as well? Yeah, see, I'm not, I'm like a little below average wasted, I think, too. And I'm busty, so it's tricky. Like, I don't really want to accentuate that. Oh, you know what? I didn't do my um, gathering stitches. Let's see. She has you put those in. I'm going to check. It doesn't look like it needs it for me, but uh, I'm going to make sure. It better need it. You know how I feel about sudden sleeves. Oh, yeah, yeah. It needs it. Okay. Let's put those in. My bad. My bad. All right. So now we can really make sure that our um, our sleeve is the, the underarm is going the proper way. So um, I'm going to... I'm actually not going to change my uh, stitch length because this fabric is so lightweight and easy to gather no matter what. Anything, I can make it a little smaller. And then I'm just going to 
So um, I'm going to do mine at about 3 eighths. She has you do two rows. I'm only going to do one. The ran's going to be pretty easy to set in. I go notch to notch. I'm going to go a little past, actually. There's one. I'm going to do this one right now so we don't forget that again. I live for set-in sleeves. <laughs> I think that might be the one thing that will end up frustrating you guys about me if there's a really cool pattern out and I'm like, oh, but it doesn't have an armhole. I'll be all whiny about it. I'll still sew it for you guys. But I just don't like the way garments feel when they don't have a real armhole. They make me feel like, you know. <laughs> Okay, so always pull your threads from the same side of the fabric on each end. So if you start pulling on the right side, pull on the right side on the other end as well. And you want to pull from both ends. You don't want to just pull from one end. So I'm just going to pull a little bit. I don't know how much I need yet. And this isn't even the sleeve I'm working on quite yet. I can. It doesn't matter. Um, I just kind of pull them and get them going. What I do is I just try and pull it so that um, it's tight, but without getting any gathers. And then I go from there. And then I see what else I might need. Definitely want it mostly up at the cap. You don't need this um, extra eased in on your underarm. You need it at the cap. That is what it's for. You need it to give you ease for the, the gush of your arm right here. <laughs> gush is not a real word, I know. <laughs> That's awesome, Lisa. Are you finding like darts and, and things like that? Like when there's more structure, it helps? Because I, I find the more structure, <clears throat> the more flattering it is, you know? Um, when things are really loose and open, like we, we all want to be like, Oh, that looks so nice and comfy, right? It's like loose and um, shapeless and everything. But honestly, if you have any, um, you know, substance to your body that it doesn't, it just doesn't work that it doesn't, I don't know. I mean, I think it can look great on all kinds of physiques, but I do find looser, um, less structured garments look better on slighter body styles and more structure and more um, de definition is more flattering on curvy. And then, you know, there are exceptions, obviously. I think both bo all body types are perfect. You just gotta find the garments that work best for you. And then occasionally throw in one that you just really wanna wear even though you know it's not your exact same body type. It's like, that's okay. I was just so thrilled when they finally came out with like boy style jeans that were lower rise. That just worked so much better for me. Okay, I'm not gonna turn this right side out, but this is still my left sleeve, I'm pretty sure. And this is my left. When, the, when you talk about left and right in garments, it's always as if you're wearing the garment, always. If it's not, they're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm going to say that flat out. <laughs> that is one universal truth with all pattern drafting. They're always talking about it as if you're wearing it. Where'd my notches go? Now I got to triple check because I'm paranoid. Yeah, yeah, this is my left sleeve. Okay. You know, you only have to sew sleeves onto the wrong armhole once or twice before you get paranoid all the time for every single shirt you do after that. Am I right or what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The flowy fabrics really help and there's a lot more flowy fabric, like actual fashion fabrics available now for home sewers and it wasn't always like that. Yeah, right? A flowy sewers and picture, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so nice, like the, um, 
the fabrics are becoming more and more readily available. Thank goodness. All right, I lined up my arm, underarm. I'm going to do quarter inch seam first, and then I'm going to do five eight or three eighths. So I'm just going to look at my how much I've pulled it in here. What I'm looking for is there's my notch, and I want that to go to my shoulder seam. I'm pretty sure that's where it goes. The only thing I'm nervous about is sometimes your uh, shoulder seam is not your yoke seam. Like when you have a yoke, that is not always your shoulder seam because sometimes yokes come forward and the shoulder is above that. So um, I kind of take it with a grain of salt if I forgot to um, notch the shoulder of the yoke. All right, so I'm going to watch my gathering threads. I don't really want to catch them too much. Um, but we're not going to encase those gathering threads quite yet. Because of the French seam, this adds a little bit of a complication when you're setting in a sleeve. You just got to trust it's all going to work out. We want all that fullness to be at the top of our sleeve, not at the bottom, not in the, um, not right here. You know, you want all that fullness up there. <laughs> That's awesome, Kirby. I haven't been there in a while. Maybe I should check it out. My um, local fabric store is trying to get more and more. Okay, so you're gonna see me. I'm going to sew over this pleat, like that gather, and I'm, it's gonna be permanently in there. And that's because that is not my final seam. So it's gonna be fine. Yeah, so my there's a, a another sewist um, at my local fabric store who's really passionate about garment making, and um, she has been advocating for a lot more fashion fabrics. But you know they they really can't add too many because they primarily cater to quilters, and so um, that's what you know that's who their customer is. Totally understandable. We're trying to uh, encourage some of those quilters to sew some garments. And some of them are up for it and others are like, nope. <laughs> okay, so now I'm running into a little bit of issue with my yoke, that one yoke being on the bias. I don't know if that was worth the treble, to be honest. I'm going to pull the yoke from underneath to line it up like that. I'm just kind of ooching along here. The first one is a little tricky. This yoke is definitely not um, cooperating very much. This isn't my final seam though, right? I get, it's like you get a second chance when you put on a set in sleeve and you're doing, um, a French seam. We need to get rid of all of this, all of that stuff. I don't really want to cut my gathering stitch quite yet because I personally like to, um, I like to pull out my gathering stitch when I'm done with it. I think um, it makes it relax a little bit better in there. And sometimes my thread's a little heavier than probably what you guys use. And I like to get cut down on the bulk in there. Sorry, am I cutting off camera? So I'm paying attention to this seam. That's the one I just sewed, not my gathering stitch. I'm not going as close as it uh, looks like I should be because um, I'm only going a quarter of an inch from my first seam, getting rid of all of this stuff. So let's see. Now we're going to put it right sides together and do our next seam. You could iron this. Um, I'm, I'm going to not iron it this time. 
the start of my underarm. I always sew on the sleeve side of the seam. I never sew on the garment side of the seam. So see, this is the garment, that's the sleeve. And I always do it from the inside so that the curve is going around the head of my machine. Now you guys probably have a free arm on your sewing machine or you can make your sewing machine a free arm, which means that the, the bed of your machine can be up and then you can put the sleeve around that. That's awesome. I miss that. So you don't have to do it the way I do it if you have a free arm. I do not have a free arm. <clears throat> Mine's flush with the table. I can feel my, I can feel it. It feels kind of wide right there. I'm a little nervous. I'm trying to feel it for where the actual cut edge is, not the, um, I can feel this, like the, the tautness of the, the state, the basting stitch is pretty tight. So this is actually the real seam and, um, normally this would be trickier, right? But we've already pre-sewed it in a way. I mean, it definitely is like, okay, wait, you're easing all that in there. Are you sure about that? But I am sure about that. Maybe I should have ironed it. <laughs> it's a lot right there. I kind of slide it between my fingers, get it right on the edge. I'm really trying to make sure all my fabric is smooth underneath the needle. And I'm in, now I'm home free. Just always tricky at the cap there. All right, so I'm gonna pull my gathering stitch out. It would have been more convenient if I had pulled from my bobbin side because I can see my bobbin side, see, this is my bobbin side of that gathering stitch right there. <clears throat> now I'm just gonna hope that one of my threads is poking out. I think that's it right there. That's why I made sure, Whew, it's gone. <laughs> and see there, it's gone. I can see a little bit of um, fabric poking through the seam probably go back and trim that off camera so I can be really close and careful. I saw it in one spot. Where was that? Right there, a little bit right there. I can, I can just sew it in case a little bit more, but I'll trim it a little bit first. Actually, I'll do it right now. I don't want to forget it. I'm going to stretch it out, pull, trim that off a little bit. And then I think I'm going to sew it again. I don't want to cut my fabric, right? Otherwise, this looks really good. I'm excited. All right, there's one sleeve. And see now that all that fullness that I just eased in there is providing this little like roundedness there because this is what you're trying to add. You're trying to add girth right here, like extra. And it's really hard to do that. Like you're, this is a, this is a different grain line than what it's sewing to for half the sleeve. But there you go, easy peasy. Hopefully I made it look easy peasy. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to sew our other one. I 
It was so funny. The other day I was sewing <laughs> and um, I'm pretty strict about like food in my shop in some ways and not in other ways, you know. And um, but one of the rules I always follow is I never put food on my cutting table. I just like, nope, no food, no drink, no nothing. Water, maybe, but that's about it. And um, but I do I will put a drink right here. Like I have my water right here, but I had a cup of tea there yesterday, a couple days ago. And um it was this tea my mom gave me for Christmas that I was trying out. And there it's called tea drops. And um you just drop in the loose tea into your drink and then it dissolves in there and it was a little bit of sweetener. I don't usually drink sweetened tea, but it was kind of a nice like afternoon treat type thing is what I was doing it for. All right, what the heck am I doing here? <laughs> there we go. And um but because it was like loose tea that you don't like steep and dip and then pull out and that it dissolved, there was some sediment in there quite a bit. And I finished winding a bobbin. And then as I picked it up, I like the thread caught and then I let go and the whole full bobbin, which I really needed, dropped right into the tea. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> so, you know, there's nothing for that. Like you just have to like wait for it to be able to be cut off of the bobbin and start over and then I had to like I had to like wind a bobbin without fabric in the machine which I hate doing it's so annoying <laughs> it's so funny though I was just like just kerplunk where'd my bobbin go right into my tea all right so I'm pushing my um underarm seams towards the back Sewing inside my sleeve. All right. Let's see. How is my sleeve lining up? I don't think I pulled this one as much yet. So, you know, I need to like gather it up a little bit more. Have you guys ever sewn for like significant others if you have guys in your life or or any guys in your life at all or and if you were to what would you sew like I asked my husband I said hey do you want a button down shirt or do you want pants and he was like uh pants <laughs> I also said you don't ever have to wear these if you don't want but I'm hoping he does It'd be kind of fun my husband is smaller than me You've got, he, it's not easy for him to find pants sometimes. Oh, this bias yoke. What was I thinking? I was thinking, I'm going to try and follow the directions. That's what they want me to do. They don't like it when I go off road. but at least you're learning from my experience, right? I'm getting more and more excited about my new space. Like at first I was like, this is nuts that I'm gonna move. This is the worst thing about, um, when I moved in here, I was kind of desperate to find a new place because I had this crazy neighbor. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we need to get out of here. And this popped up and it was perfect. And so I got it. But we had to move over the holidays and before our shows, which has put my my lease renewal every year at this time. And I'm like, wow, if I leave, I have to like deal with the same exact thing. So he would choose a shirt. Yeah. Oh, you made him knit pants. That's adorable. Why didn't you show me those? The only guy here is a cat. Oh, that sounds easy. <laughs> Much easier to please. I love cats. My um, One of my cats loves to wrestle with my puppy. It's the weirdest thing. He'll go up to him and kind of, and my puppy is like, just loves him. He's so excited when he sees him. It's like, it's like he's seeing a rock star. He saw him walking along the fence the other day in the backyard outside and he just was beside himself like oh my god he can do that too it was so cute um and yeah he will wrestle with him and um like 
grab on to him and he totally baits him and tries to get him to do it but then he acts like he doesn't like it it's pretty funny my other cat's like what the heck i thought i was scot-free for the rest of my life here no more dogs he likes molly but the puppy's a little bit more too a little too curious of him and thinks he's gonna play with him the same way nope <laughs> not gonna happen or actually, I need to keep this. Oh my gosh, my shirt's like all like higgledy piggledy right now. All right. Last scene before my hem. Look at how good that looks like it matched up. I'm kind of impressed, honestly, because uh, it's not easy lining up this um, rayon. Am I whining too much about Rayon? Jane was so sweet. She sent, commented on one of my Instagram posts and she said, I know that Rayon's fiddly, but it looks like it's going to be worth it. It's good for this shirt. And she's right. It totally is. And I just am very out of practice with sewing it. I used the Rayon for the um, Charlie Kaftan that was in my Needle Sharp box. And it was... Um, it was the Rifle Paper Company rayon, and it had a lot more weight to it. There's a lot more ink on the fabric, too. So I think that they gave it more body. It was a little bit easier to deal with than this. This is a much lighter weight. Mr. Cat. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I used to have a cat named Mr. Kitty. Santa gave him to me. It was a long time ago. <laughs> And then um, the one that plays with my puppy, his name is Senor, and um, which is uh, Spanish for Mister. And it's because when he adopted us, like he wanted to leave his owners and move in with us. Like he 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 definitely made it clear he was not going back to them. And um, but his name was Mister Kitty, and I was like, no, we can't name we can't name him that. But I didn't know we were going to keep him. I just named him Senor, just because he always showed up and wanted to eat my yogurt out of my cereal bowl he would come in through the cat door and um or the dog door he came in through the dog door and we'd find him asleep in our house all the time he did not like living where he was living so my fingers are doing a lot right now um i'm kind of keeping this curve like this because remember i just made the sleeve a lot tighter than the outer piece, the, the, than the garment. And so making it try and lay flat is a losing battle because I've already said, I want you to be smaller than this other thing. So in a way, I'm kind of like putting it on like this, you know, I'm kind of like trying to say, yeah, this is where you're going to go. And um, as I get close to the end, it gets easier and easier. I'm trying to keep it as smooth as possible. I feel like my hands do a better job than pins when it comes to something like, like this. All right, let's see how I did. These honestly look better than some of the set-in sleeves I've done lately, and it's probably because of the rayon. It doesn't look that great on the inside, but that's because of the gather. Here's my gathering thread. Poof, gone. There's the bobbin. So satisfying. I know you guys wish you were doing that. <laughs> okay, there's my other sleeve. I got a blouse. Very cute. I told myself that I, as soon as I was done streaming, I'm going home. I'm not going to sit here at work. But I really want to put buttons and buttonholes on this so I can wear it right away. Okay, let's, um, let's put the hem in. All right, that right there, that is a recipe for frustration. And I don't know, do you, do you know why I'm saying this? I'm not talking about the difference right there. Do you know why I'm saying to do this hem is a recipe for frustration? I'm curious because I've talked about this before. And I want to know if you guys know what I mean. Not that I'm trying to lecture. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait 30 seconds. I think it's like 30 second delay. I want to see if you guys know why. I'm like, oh, that looks hard. <laughs> of all the things I've done on this, this looks the hardest right now for me. 
Any answers? I'm curious. It's the same over here. This one lines up, but um, that right there, impossible. <laughs> anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> Anyone? Come on, you guys. All right, okay, it's because it's not a right angle at the side seam. You cannot put in a hem right here, a rolled hem, with a nice transition unless you have a right angle right there. If this were a vent, that would be fine, but it's not a vent. A vent meaning a, like a side slit. So <clears throat> I have to put I have to put a right angle in here. Otherwise, this is just going to be agonizingly frustrating. So I'm just going to go like this. See that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it won't work to fold the hem exactly. Yeah, it needs more space. It is hard to explain. But really, all it boils down to is right angles. You need a smooth transition and right angles. Like that. It's still going to be hard. <laughs> There's not a facing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, I, I have a feeling that the narrower you do this, the better. But you're probably going to get some torquing. Just steaming it and all that is not good enough because it'll just come back once you iron it. Yeah, I probably should have looked ahead at that and I would have probably made a vent right there so that I wouldn't have to deal with it. Yeah, I could do like, um, at least I could do like a, a bias hem, you know, but none of my bias is pre-washed and it's all quilting cotton. So I'm a little hesitant to do that because it would shrink differently, you know, cause it's on the bias. It would shrink all, all diagonally across it, which makes it torque. I do it. I cheat with it all the time, but, um, it has ramifications. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna see how good I did eyeballing both of these so that they're um, pretty symmetrical. Like, yeah, I, I just saw that little bump right there. That's something I can like smooth out with the, the hem, you know. I always wanted an excuse to have one of these little tiny rotary mats. So thanks, you guys. <laughs> okay. That's pretty good. Um, I should have backstitched right here. I think I did on that one, but I didn't on this one. And now it's obvious because it's pulling apart. I don't usually backstitch unless I know I, um, it's going to be an area where I'm pulling it apart. And of course, that's going to be an area I'm pulling it apart while I'm hemming it. Okay. So if you have a roll hem foot on your machine, this would probably be a really great um, shirt for that. I will say you're probably gonna run into some issues with this curve on that. Um, if you have a serger, another thing is just serging this. Make your serger stitch look nice, like fiddle with it. Uh, don't be so shy about adjusting your sergers to look like to make the threads look nicer, fiddle around with it. You're not gonna hurt your serger. You can adjust the tensions, but play around mostly with your width and your length of your stitches. I'm not talking about your tension at all. Just play around with that because sometimes you can get a little bit more polished of a serger look. <clears throat> I think you'll like it. And then that way you could just serge this edge and then turn it up once and stitch it down easy peasy like that would be the easiest way to hem this blouse if you have a serger you could zigzag it as well and then turn it and top stitch it as well i'm not opposed to zigzag i know a lot of people really want a more professional looking 
finish on their shirt so they think um, zigzag doesn't give them that but um I'm not opposed to that. Like, I don't really feel like you need to own every gadget, gizmo, and machine in order to have a professional, unless, you, unless you're sewing professionally. But people really appreciate the look of handmade now. And um, I do, too. I like, I, I really do. I'm just, I'm just getting rid of some of these threads while I talk with you guys. There's, you don't really have to. It'll make my life a little easier if they're not there. I'm going to start at the side seam, but I'm going to start kind of on the back, let's make sure that's the back. This is the back. Okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start on the back, just behind the side seam, because you know me, I like to get my sewing legs under me when I approach the difficult spot and then keep going. Um, and I, um, I would really love to procrastinate doing this for as long as possible. I don't like doing these at all. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and do the narrowest hem possible. And we will see like this right here this area right here that's all in the bias that'll stretch see that eek <laughs> this right here not on the bias this is where you want that bias and you don't have any <laughs> so um that is why this gets so hard right there between the seam and there being no stretch right there it's like bound up it's fixed and so um trying to get you know, just this little bit of rolled hem right here. You can already see it. Look, it does not want to do that. So I'm gonna do try and narrow, do one as narrow as possible. I'm gonna try and get my sewing legs under me back here. Um, I'm not very good at delicate sewing or um, fine sewing. I'm not very good at fine sewing, delicate sewing, really narrow things. That's not my expertise. I'm more, a little more, uh, like I like the heavy structure of things. I like top stitching. I'm a little clunkier than this delicate stuff. I went through a phase of really liking it and being into it. And I have this really amazing book called of uh, fine machine sewing. It is incredible. Um, and then I, I kind of like went through that phase and I was like, all right, I don't need to do this anymore. All right, so here we go. So this size 14 needle and this Tex 40 thread is also going to work against me a little bit. Um, something that uh, you should probably know about is that the th th home machine thread also comes in different weights. I'm sure you all know about like heavy duty thread for sewing denim or buttonhole or buttons, I mean. Um, but if you were sewing, if this was silk, this would be a really lovely blouse in silk. Um, I should have said this from the beginning because this is actually a really helpful trick. When you sew silk, you need a much smaller needle, like a size six. <laughs> no joke, size six needle. And the reason you need a size six needle is because the silk is so tightly woven that um, you're just gonna break your needles if you use anything higher. So it's silk is so strong that um, you need a really fine needle to pierce the fibers and move them aside. And then because you've got such a fine needle, you have to get a smaller weight thread for that. And most fabric stores, if you go to a good one or someone who's done some of that sewing, they will know what you're looking for, but you need a lighter weight thread to be able to fit through the eye of the needle. And that would be actually be a really lovely, um, you know, finish on here is using a lighter weight thread and a lighter weight needle. I can't go any lower than what I have though. Not on this machine. All right, torquing supreme. So I'm gonna use my little awl and I'm gonna kind of push that up there. Longest rolled hem ever. <laughs> But worth it right so i got i get it kind of into place it torques really bad and then i kind of ooch it in there so that it stops doing that i keep thinking there's like a dot on my can you see this see that i can see it through the fabric and i keep going what's that <laughs> so i kind of get it going over here and then i do this 
Now you could iron this. Um, I feel like that could end up working against you. But if you're really good at this like really fine dexterity stuff and um, working with your iron, which is kind of a big, heavy, hot object, if you're good with that, then do it there at the ironing board. I My um, dexterity is better sitting here at the machine when I have like, the machine is like my third hand holding it for me. And then I have my other two hands. And then my foot, you know, is operating my presser foot so I don't have to even take my hand off. So that this works good for me. It's looking pretty good. What do you guys think? That actually looks way better than I thought. And it's probably because I'm so scared <laughs> and I'm live <laughs> that um, it's going to come out okay. But I'm not even across the back. So if you want to see me next week, I feel free. <laughs> but I'm going to sit here and I'm going to finish this. So um, one thing also that could help to do this, and, and I probably could have done this, is... You could sew a stitch all the way around the perimeter of your hem, right where you want it to fold. And then it would want to fold there because that's going to draw it up a little bit, like tighten it up. Okay, so I'm getting to these stretchier areas. And they're stretchy on the curve too, but you're, you don't need it there either, right? You're trying to ease that in. So there's, I'm almost halfway. Woo -hoo. Not bad, not bad. This is probably the narrowest hem I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I wish my fingernails were a little longer for this. All right. Get into one of these tricky spots. I don't want to. I don't want to touch that until I'm right about to sew it because I don't want to um, start pulling on the seam. So now I'm gonna sit here and I kind of arrange this a little bit. The awl is gonna be really helpful here. You can use a pin as well. Um, I don't know if that one went so good. Yeah, sewing a fold line, right, Malin? I think that that is, um, I wish I would have thought of that sooner. And she, um, she does that technique on the edge of the cuff fold and on the placket fold. And I think that's really smart. It's a really good idea, good suggestion she, that she offers in the instructions. She might say that on the hem but I I skimmed the hem and I don't think I saw that I just remember her saying you know steam and press as you go it'll be easier um, I find that if I iron it I sometimes fix something in that I don't want to be there anymore and I may want to adjust it as I'm sewing and I can't because it's ironed and then I'd have to take it back to the board and straighten it out. And it's just like, then you have start and stops and you're sewing and I don't like start and stops, you know that. So this is my strength. It's just manipulating the fabric right here at the machine. It's okay, it's a little like kooky right there. You can see this little bound up edge right here. Doing the little <laughs> a little flare right there. Can you see that? Yeah, so. But we are almost done. Ooh, I can't wait to make pants. <laughs> pants are so easy. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, I saw Hearts Fabric did a um, email about denim. I haven't opened it yet. Like literally, you guys, I'm serious. I've been working 12 hour days. I get home at like nine or 9.30 and um, sometimes, sometimes eight or 8.30, but I've been going in pretty early too. And um, I haven't seen what it says. So make sure you guys, if you're on their newsletter list, check it out. Maybe it's even a denim um, discount. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I think you do get a discount when you sign up for their newsletter for your first purchase. If some of you need your denim for your itch to stitch and they list their denim stretch. Ooh, look at this is all working out. They list their denim, denim stretch in the um, description of the fabric and it's, um, I'm not sponsored by them or anything and you might find a fabric store closer to you, especially one you can see in person. Hearts is in California, so they're really close to me. And it's H-A-R-T-S. Not not like H-E-A-R-T-S, but H-A-R-T-S. All right. I'm going to iron it because I want it to look better. <laughs> Just a second. You know the tragedy is going to be if this thing is too long and I need to do this again. It kind of flares. It's kind of, uh, I'll show you guys in a second. I'm almost done. kind of flares Can you see that it's like woo all right I like it though I think it's really cute it may uh it would actually be a really nice night shirt <laughs> you know I don't wear um like nightgowns, but um, it would be a really nice nightgown to make it a little longer. You could even simplify the sleeves so you don't have to do this cuff. Where's my, where's my pie? Oh, it's upside down, I couldn't see it. Just fiddling now. <laughs> All right. What do you guys think? Not bad, eh? All right. Maybe I would put uh, like a little button on the pocket here too, just so you can see the pocket a little better. There's the whole thing. Wish the color looked better on the camera. All right, you guys, well, I got another blouse. I'll definitely put some buttons and buttonholes on it soon and take a picture of me wearing it so you can see how long it is. Um, if I shorten it though, I'll let you know. So, um, and how much if I do. And I made the large, just so you guys know, my bust is about 37. So that's why I went with the large. Um, <clears throat> I'm not typically a size 14, but that's what that was listed with. So just be wary of the sizing. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm really loving it. Yeah, thanks. I really like it. And I got this fabric, um, like I'm on the, I have the Needle Sharp subscription box and she has extra fabrics from her boxes that she sells. And she sells them on sale. And that's where I got this from. I got some really good fabrics from her. Sometimes it's nice to find fabrics from unique places because they're just like, this is extra. I want it to go. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, I will see you Thursday for the Jutland pants. Um, 
God, I really wish I would remember. It's thread theory, right? Oh, I'm so sorry if I'm quoting that wrong. Um, and I'll, I'll do a little more teasers for it as I lead up to it. I know I've been really quiet, quieter than even I am on social media, but I've just been like nose to the grindstone, right? So I'm listening to audiobooks and sewing and yeah, that looks really cute. I think it'll look good. It's almost the same color as my skin though. <laughs> I'm so pink. <laughs> this is pretty pink too, <laughs> but I like it. I think it looks really cute. Yeah, so, all right, you can find me on Instagram, so so live. You can send me an email, so so live at gmail.com. You could go to the chickenbootsusa.com website and sign up for the newsletter by clicking the sewing tab on there. Not my chicken boots newsletter, but the sewing tab that's on there. Uh, right in the first couple sentences, there's a newsletter for that, and that's when I tell you about my schedule and send you free downloadable patterns. Like right now, if you sign up on the newsletter, you get the notions case for free as a download. And I sewed a bunch of those on the closet organizer videos like in mid-October. So mid-October, is that when I did that? I think so. Um, and then the closet or organizer is also a free download, which I still need to be able to put up on the website so you guys can grab it. Not that I think any of you are sewing it, but I hope one day someone does. Um, and, um, we will see each other Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific. Thanks so much. I'm Sarah Mee, and I really appreciate you guys stopping by. It was a lot of fun. I really love this, um, blouse and I'm really glad that I finally got to sew it. So take care guys. <laughs>